But joining us now is Blue Shirt Group Managing Director Gary Dvorak, who will be attending Xi Jinping's banquet at the APEC Summit on Wednesday. Gary, it's great to have you. Um, and I do want to start right there, because this has been anticipated for a while, the Boeing news. And it certainly seems like it could be a potential, dare I use the phrase, olive branch in terms of these two leaders getting together. Uh, is, is it right for the market to expect such a, such a news announcement to take place? Uh, I, I think uh, it is. It's probably not the only big announcements we're going to get. But in fact, the whole, uh, you know, the whole fact that Xi Jinping is coming to San Francisco uh, and that Biden is meeting him is, is really more of the olive branches because uh, probably sometime last year, the, the relationship hit a really low point and it was very contentious. And certainly the U.S. has been reaching out and sending senior officials to China. Xi Jinping coming to America is, is not common. Uh, and until probably about a month ago, it was unknown whether he would uh, he would even come. And so um, it, 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 this is, it's important for economics, but it's really more important at a more base level uh, in terms of the relationship and just turning down the heat uh, at the rhetoric and uh, the contentiousness. Um, I think everyone knows the Chinese put a list of demands, or maybe maybe not demands is the right word, but the things that they wanted to see before they would agree to. Uh, the president coming to, to San Francisco, top of the list is mutual respect, right? And it makes sense. I mean, we can't have a good relationship on um, trading, uh, you know, in any other way without some level of mutual respect between the two countries. Because so, we really are, both of us are the two most powerful countries in the world. Yeah. So, so in light of that, how much actual policy do you expect to be crafted here this week? Or is it really more about that communication and the optics of that communication? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know that we'll have policy breakthroughs. I mean, the devil's in the details, and it's about the negotiations that have to, that happen after the fact. It's really setting the tone, right? And the fact that the Xi Jinping comes here, the fact that Biden's willing to meet him, it sets the tone at the top that the leaders are willing to um, put down their guns, hold up the olive branches, as you say, but but basically talk to each other and try to find some common ground. And and as you know, the. One of the reasons I'm going, and this news kind of broke over the weekend, is that a lot of Xi Jinping's old friends from Iowa, who we met in 1985, were invited to the meeting. And it was a little bit of an eye-opener, because uh, uh, people expected this really to be a business event more than anything else. But Xi Jinping uses that Iowa relationship to, uh, to humanize himself, to humanize the relationship between the two countries, and really emphasize the fact that uh, when you get below the, the, the senior government leaders, and you look at people, right, people-to-people -people relationships, just like he experienced uh, 35 years ago, um, that's the base uh, where both countries can have a better relationship together. That does sound nice, Gary, but it also makes me wonder, what's the biggest economic miscalculation that the U.S. risks making, not just at this summit, but going on from here when it comes to China? Um, I, you know, listen, I think... The biggest economic miscalculation we all make is to, to view trade as war, and it's often spoken about in, 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 in military terms. And look, we don't lose by having more trade with China, right? Uh, I mean, we already, look, Americans love China. We walk into Walmart every day. It's full of products from China. Americans vote with their dollars, right? They, they like China. The relationship is fine. So we don't lose by having the Chinese manufacture for us. We don't lose when... Uh, Chinese, as they enter the middle class, they want Teslas, they want iPhones, they want Western luxury goods. So trade is a win. And, and so not on a policy level, but on a, a more philosophical level, I think we need to dial back from the, the trade is warfare. And if China wins, America loses and really get understand more that it, it is a win-win as much as that can be a cliche. Right. We both, both win if we work for each other. Gary, you mentioned iPhones. This is a critical few weeks, several weeks for Apple in Q4 with iPhone sales. China is where they're made, and there's been pressure on Apple's sales in China, particularly when it comes to the government, but more broadly than that. Is there potential upside for a company, a stock like Apple, if this goes well? Uh, I definitely think to the extent that it um, cools off the, the negative rhetoric and um, creates a, a, a more friendly underlying foundation than absolutely. Um, certainly, there's a lot of tit for tat. 
after we banned Huawei and then the, the Chinese was cracking down, it, we just start reverse, we need reverse tip or tap, right? So a small move on their part, a small move on our part, and certainly Apple, certainly Tesla, there's a number of American beneficiaries if things just cool off even a little bit because China is such a big market.